Welcome to The Alley Effect with Allison Blythe, authentically living life your way. We all contemplate making changes in our lives that would allow us to live more authentically, but it can be hard to take action. Allison is here to educate, equip, and empower you with the tools you need to start authentically living life your way. Get ready to eradicate your limitations and destructive patterns as you take full responsibility for your own happiness. This show is not just talk. It is conversation for profound self-awareness, acceptance, and appreciation. The key elements to stepping into the power as the creator of your very best life. The Alley Effect with Allison Blythe starts now. Hey, everyone. Welcome. You're listening to The Alley Effect, authentically living life your way with me, Allison Blythe, certified life coach and licensed clinical social worker. You can join me the first and third Thursday of every single month right here on Transformation Talk Radio as we dig deep into this concept of authenticity, helping you understand it on such a deeper level, because we all know it seems so easy. Just be yourself. And yet in reality, today's day and age, with filters and all these pressures to perfect and perform, it's way tougher than one might actually think it to be. So this is where you can come to actually learn tools, tips, and techniques to educate, equip, and empower you in authentically living life your way. Stay with me for the next hour. We're going to cover yet another topic, supporting you in learning to build muscle, so to speak, to show up in the world fully as yourself. This is where you come to transform through practical tools and some real talk. Don't mind this stuff I've got going on. I'm not sure what happened, but it kind of hit me out of nowhere over the past couple of days. And we're just going to keep pushing through and I'm just going to make the most of it. So we've hit quite a run over the past couple of weeks. Um, I started introducing the topic of empathy. And weeks ago, I told you about an incident of road rage that I had that really caught me off guard. Like I was really taken aback. And yet it spun me into this critical level of awareness where I was like, what are we doing to each other in the world? And how can we start to be much more practical and deliberate about using the tool of empathy? which then triggered a whole other conversation to a much deeper, more unique, elite population in the world. Because I shared not just about the emotion of empathy, but the community in our world of empaths, people who are actually wired, a pretty rare population in our world, uh, of people who show up in the world with such deeper levels of emotion. They kind of feel all the feels of the earth. People, places, and things uh, affect them. People who are empaths can detect and sense energy and emotion like a lot of other people can't necessarily. And so it's this element where people are showing up in the world as empaths and not knowing what's going on with them. It's a precious community of people. And so last time to even drive that lesson even further, I brought with you two special guests who shared about their experience of living life as empaths two pretty amazing women who I've gotten to know over the course of several years who shared very vulnerably their journey and what it has been like for them to function and relate in the world as empaths. They shared deeply and pretty intimately as empaths certainly know how to do. Empaths can't really stand superficial conversation. We go right to the depths and we did that last time that we were together. And a lot of times what happens with empaths is that they'll ask that question. They feel distorted, dysfunctional in a lot of ways. And they ask that classic empathic question, what is wrong with me? Why can't I be more like normal people, right? Normal, whatever that might be. And these ladies put it all out there. And so if you haven't taken the time to listen to that show, do yourself a favor, go all the way back, start with that empathy challenge, learn more about, am I an empath in this world? And then the risk these lo lovely ladies took in order to kind of express themselves and share the heart of their stories. As is the case with everything in life, um, there's so much that happens behind the scenes. And so last time when we finished up the recording, we actually just kept the conversation rolling. It was like, 
we both, we all just kind of like were chiming in. And even our producer, Lydia, at the time shared about some of her experience. And she started to question like, wait a minute, I can really relate to this stuff. Am I an empath too? It was really some great stuff. And we knew we weren't done. We knew we had more to offer and to share. And today we plan to do just that. So ladies, I want to welcome you one more time, Kimmy and Carrie. Hi. Hi there, Austin. It's great for you you guys to be back. I always appreciate spending time with you guys. I'm wondering, so we're going to dive in and just see where the conversation goes, very much like we did last time. We had kind of talked about a little bit, what do we want to cover? And then we just found that we just kind of traveled our own road, which was really awesome. I want to know, how was it last time? You both were very much on display in a very public format, sharing authentically, very, very vulnerably. How was that for you in in terms of doing the show and sharing so honestly? I'll go first. I think I immediately reached out to you thinking, oh my goodness, you know, as an empath, you know, you want to be able to really help somebody. So I think I was so afraid. Did I say the right things? And, you know, just being nervous, was I authentic enough, you know, because I want people to really know this is really um, a, a amazing gift, um, but I want them to know that it does come with um, some difficulties and how to how to, to how to navigate that. So I really wanted to make sure I was communicating it, and I think I was just super nervous through it all. But this time, I do feel a lot more relaxed. So just um, very nervous, questioning. But I think as an empath, you just want to make sure that you're helping somebody else, and that's what I was hopeful for. So yeah, you absolutely did do that. Yeah. How about for you, Carrie? What was it like? You know what? I can relate to uh, the feeling. Um, of being, you know, just anxious and then kind of having that, did I say the right thing? Did I say something that somebody might take the wrong way? Did I share too much? So there was vulnerability involved, but there's also a sense of authenticity of like, it felt so good to actually share who I truly am because I've spent so much of my life not being afraid to do that because Mm -hmm. of feeling different, because of feeling wrong. Um, because I'm not understanding myself. And so the fact that I'm in a place now where I understand myself enough to actually be able to um, share that, to articulate that, I have um, information um, about my journey that makes sense to me that maybe would help someone else. Um, That felt really, really empowering, actually. Yeah, very good. Yeah, both of your stories are so incredibly powerful. And I've had the privilege of kind of journeying with you. I feel like we've all kind of just grown into this work together. So the opportunity to share it collectively. And, you know, I I say in the in the intro, really intentionally, like, isn't it ridiculous that we would show up in the world as anyone but ourselves? And yet, Every day we're doing things, we're up against these elements um, to to kind of perfect and perform very much like I said. And as an empath, if you do sense that you're different, like we experience the world differently from other people. And so, yeah, it is kind of this idea of like, what is happening inside of me? And I think some of the most powerful work that I've done and I've witnessed the two of you do is just this deep level of understanding, acceptance, and even appreciation. I've watched it, watched you guys really strengthen. And that's kind of what I want to talk about now. Like what, why are empaths so important? Like, why is this such a vital skill or strength? Why do you think the world needs people wired? Like we are wired. I'll go back to the analogy because this makes a lot of sense to me um, of the canary in the coal mine, Mm -hmm. where I feel like the impasse are like the canaries in the world where we sense the toxins or we sense the um, that something is off, that something's not right um, quicker than someone who's not an empath. Mm -hmm. And you need people like that in the world, not only to be able to sense that something's wrong, whether it's something big, or maybe it's just with someone that you um, are with. I work with children and I very quickly can pick up on um, if something's off with a child. And then I also just can have a sense of, do they need space? Do they need words of encouragement? Like it just kind of comes to me. And we just need people that have that level of sensitivity and that depth of feeling and awareness um, to actually, I feel like to bring some some healing and then some encouragement to people or a person or just an issue. 
Yep. That's, that's the beauty of it. The emotion of empathy is so, oh, it's beautiful. And being an empath is actually beautiful. But I think Kimmy and Carrie, you just did too, kind of alluded to the fact that it has some sharp edges to it. And with this information and all of these tools that we're learning and being able to have a community of being in this together, there is a sense of like, we can go out into the world with these, this intuitive level of knowing. I've been kind of coined as a coach who just gets it, right? I'm just a therapist and a coach who gets it. And, and just like that, I can sit with someone and almost instantly put pieces together for them in ways they've never been able to understand. And whether we're in the school systems, whether we're in our own communities or in a practice like mine, friends, family, it's just like this sense of we can see and detect things, and the strengths and struggles that people have. Yeah. Kimmy? Yeah, I would say the same thing. Um, I also have worked with kids for a long time and same thing, but just being able to really be able, like you said, to assess, do they need space? I think it's just as important of knowing this, this little kiddo just needs some time, needs a chance to relax, or does this kid need a hug? You know, without them even saying a word, sometimes you can just pick up on their, you know, their vibe or whatever. But I, I noticed in my own family, in my um, husband in the grocery store, anytime. I, I feel like I definitely have a sense of knowing and, and have paused in the middle of shopping and things, just staying close to somebody because I can feel the energy that they, they need help and, and being bold sometimes and even asking, can I help you? Because you can just feel that sense sometimes that somebody needs help. And I, I do think that is a gift that we bring into this world that we're able to, um, see, sense, feel some of those things that, you know, maybe other people don't. Um, but it, it is definitely a gift. And I, I love bringing this to the table. It's interesting because I see now on the empowered side of this work, how necessary that skill set is. Can, can either of you or both of you talk a little bit about what life was like before, if you would be in the grocery store or at work sensing and detecting and not knowing like, wait a minute, why did my mood just get so heavy? Or why is my energy level so drained? Or why do I instantly like detest that person that I don't know? Like, what was it like before when you were kind of going through the world, having that level of, of absorption or awareness of other people's emotion and energy? What was that like without this skill set? Can you remember back to an incident or situations like that? I, I know for sure I can. I, I think like Carrie said in the beginning, you just feel off. You feel like something's wrong with you. You know, when you walk into a room without the knowledge that we have now and you immediately feel this reaction when nobody has really even said anything to you, nobody may have even looked at you, but you feel this overwhelming just burst of energy because of the room that you're in, you think something's wrong with you. You know, so you think what's wrong? Why am I feeling hot? Why am I feeling flushed? Why am I feeling anxious? All these feelings come flooding in. So then you think what's wrong? Am I getting sick? You know, what are these sensations that I'm feeling? You don't understand. And later in life, I've learned that those were more of my body giving me signals. But at that time, it makes you feel sort of crazy when you don't know, or, you know, when you're out and about and you're around somebody that you don't even know in the grocery store, passing them on the street and feeling this just desire to literally stop in your steps and talk to them for no, no indication that you should be talking to them, but your, your, your radar is going off saying this person needs you, you know, and sometimes I don't always get the confirmation that I, I need or that, you know, but something has stopped me to reach out to that person. So um, it's very uncontrolled before I learned um, and very uncertain. I didn't understand it. So I think that's probably the biggest things that I remember. And, and then also being very misunderstood when I would express what I was feeling to other people, they would think I was nuts when I would just say this room feels off. They mm -hmm. didn't understand it. Well, and the idea that energy exists in people, places, and things like we can absolutely pick up an object and be like, Oh, or walk into a room and be like, what in the world has gone on in here? And so, yeah, and, and everyone else is smiling and having a great time. And we're all like contorted in the, in the energy of an experience. And people are like, wow, what? Or we have to leave. I know we've talked many times about socialization and what that's like being around crowds or different types of environments, whether it's music, commotion, alcohol, energy, like just detecting those types of things. And 
prior to this, not knowing how to really regulate, process, or move energy, not being able to even understand it. So yeah, a- absolutely. Kind of a before and after picture of what it was like. Carrie, do you have any perspective about that? Um, I think um, a word that really resonates with me that you mentioned was heavy. Life yeah. was really heavy. Yeah. Life was really intense. There was struggle. There was a sense of inner chaos and almost sometimes um, feeling outside of my own body, just living in a space, not like um, where I was so caught up in other energy, other emotion, that it was unclear what I was really feeling and what I really thought, what I really wanted or needed. Um, And I think that did cause a lot of dysfunction in relationships. It caused hyper responsibility um, within my family of origin, feeling like um, things were my fault when they weren't, or I was causing things, or I could change things that I couldn't change. So um, just uh, definitely before knowing um, how I am in the world, purposely created this way and how to use tools to manage it and the beauty of it. Um, I think life was just hard. It was heavy. There was struggle. And there was, there's much more of a sense of me being um, assimilated Hmm. at this point, body, mind, and spirit compared to the way I used to be. Yeah. That's, that's why I'm talking about empowered, you know, educated, equipped, and empowered because it's this sense of overwhelmed sometimes and being in the world today's day and age with news, social media feeds, attack, assault, violence. Empaths have such tenderness and compassion. Not only can we feel, and I think this is kind of what you're saying, not only can we feel um, our own experiences, but they're often interwoven with other people's. And when other people's energy and emotion is so intense or so bombarding, it can be something we watch on TV and pointing to my TV. It's um, kind of this idea that we can even just witness something secondhand. We don't have to be in the midst of it. And it doesn't even have to be our own, how completely overwhelming other people's experiences can be in in situations like that. And learning to detect when we come back, we're going to take a break, but when we come back, I want to talk about what are some tools you've learned to be able to manage energy, separate your experiences from that of other people, certainly the gift of awareness and and understanding all of that. So be be mindful of kind of like where where we might go next. But you are listening to The Alley Effect with me, Allison Blythe. Today, I do have two amazing guests, both Kimmy and Carrie. When we come back, we're going to take a quick break. But when we come back, we're going to continue this conversation and let these ladies continue to educate, equip, and empower you. We'll be right back. We're back here on The Alley Effect with me, Allison Blythe, certified life coach and licensed clinical social worker. The Alley Effect, authentically living life your way, really handing you the steering wheel to your own life to help you be educated, equipped, and empowered with the way you're navigating through life. I want to make sure before we go much further, you're probably going to be hearing some stuff today that you can really relate to. And really, your eyes might be opening to the first time of like what it's like to be in this world, potentially with either the emotion of empathy or as an actual empath. So if you want to be in touch with me, don't ever hesitate to call my office at 859-341-7773. If you want to email me, go old fashioned email, right? Allison Blythe at live.com. Check out my website. You want to learn a little about about me and kind of some history and where I came from and certainly the offerings that I have, allisonblythe.com and social media. Great way to get just a little bit of a boost uh, throughout the week, throughout your day. Allison Blythe, life coach on any social media platform. Today, I have the gift of welcoming back both Kimmy and Carrie who have done the work of becoming empowered empaths, two women who I've watched over the years really kind of step into their full strengths and beauty of being an empath in today's day and age before knowing what it was, potentially feeling very 
plagued, saturated, overwhelmed, struggling, kind of a ton of self-doubt and confusion about what was going on inside of them. And as they've traveled this journey, educated, equipped, and empowered, and kind of like, I think I know, I think I understand what it is that's going on inside of me and how I'm showing up in the world. And then also to women who've brought themselves fully to a beautiful community of empaths who gather together. So today, ladies, thank you for being back here. We started to talk about like kind of the before and after of being in the world and now knowing what it is. And I believe, I will often say to my clients, this stuff doesn't get cured. It doesn't get fixed. It's not like we're going to change your wiring. We don't want to change your wiring. And I do think just like our health, our finances, our cars, our lawn, our homes, we do need to kind of care and manage how we are and who we are in this world. What are some resources? What do you do to take care of yourself? To We've learned a lot. We've spent a lot of time together. Um, we've learned a lot of tools, a lot of different resources. What are some of the main ones that you've learned to stay, to be able to use on a consistent basis, to stay on the more empowered side of being an empath? I think for me, um, energy is huge for an empath. It, it's just, and I am a very energetic person. I am constantly moving. I have a really hard t- time sitting still. And that, that's a good thing sometimes, but then also I'm learning, I feel like so many cues keep coming in to slow down and slow down in nature. Both of those have been huge for me over the past, I guess, since we've been meeting the past six, nine months that we've really been, and it's been extremely helpful for me. Those two words, slow down and then getting into nature. So I guess it's more than two words, but slow down and nature are my themes, I guess I would say. And just really taking the time in nature, no headphones, just taking the dog, really just listening, stopping, taking that time to focus. I I know these might sound like little things, but they've been huge for me. Just noticing the little, the little critters on the ground, the, the details and leaves. I don't slow down enough and slowing my body down is almost like a recovery. It's a reset when my energy and the input from the world is so heavy and it's so much I've never given myself the gift truly to settle down, to stop, to slow. And I really feel like it's become a little bit of a gift. It's it's allowing my shoulders to relax down a little bit simply by walking, not running, just walking. And sometimes walking barefoot, you know, really letting my feet feel the earth, feel the grass, feel the temperature. All these little things help with my external inputs. So for me, slowing down in nature have been huge ways to help um, balance this crazy amount of energy that empaths feel. So yeah, that's one for very sure. Cool. We live in a society where we are assaulted by stimuli all the time, whether it's notifications on our phone or again, news feeds and all the Amazon doorbell ringing, you know, all of these opportunities to just con- let me look that up on my phone, constant, constant stimulation. And for any human being, we're not designed to be that way. We're not designed to continuously think about way. I mean, we, we really, we have to sleep. We have to slow down a little bit, but we live in a society that is so fast paced, even if it's not just in movement, in the stimulation coming in. And your point is absolutely critical in terms of unplugging and getting yourself grounded. That's so much of what we've talked about, especially with energy. If you're affected by energy, if you're experiencing or you've absorbed a lot of energy, knowing how to ground your energy and ground yourself. If you're going to be going out into the world, knowing how to feel deeply, deeply rooted, there is nothing more beautiful then quiet, stillness, rest. And literally I I'm sitting, I think you guys know this. I have a rock. It's pretty big. That sit. I put my feet on this rock as we're talking because it's earthly and it has very grounding energy. So even if you have to sit at a computer screen all day, what can you do to get yourself grounded feet on the earth, bare feet, sitting on the earth, leaning back against a tree, all of those things. Nature is a beautiful example of how to, how to be in the world. So yeah, excellent. How about for you, Carrie? Um, The first thing that comes to mind is the word retreating. And what I mean by that is retreating from the situation or environment that is feeling overwhelming, overstimulating, um, there's too much coming in. Um, 
allowing myself to step out or to leave, Mm -hmm. um, breathing is a big one for me. Um, and then also really paying attention to what's going on in my body. Um, I love the question, is this in my highest and best interest? And then just seeing what that feels like. Does that feel warm? Does it feel cold? We've talked about the body testing. Um, I am a big, um, visualization. I like visual analogies. Um, so closing my eyes as I'm breathing and just <clears throat> visualizing something that's calming, that's grounding. Um, and then, um, there's something else I was going to mention. Um, I think overall it's just self-care. Mm-hmm. So it's really recognizing what it is that's not working in the moment. And then for me, it's about retreating out of that and just, and just experiencing, allowing myself to, um, experiencing, experience things that are calming to me. Hmm. Two, two things, um, that I really picked up when you were talking, the first one is sensory, you know, empaths have very, uh, significant ways that they receive information it's, and have, I keep saying this, but spidey senses. And, and so things like fragrance or sound sensory type stuff, gut knowing, um, when what I hear you kind of talking about is these ways that you can step back from a situation and be able to still experience things through, through the senses to be able to detect, but also regulate your word retreat allows me to recognize that as empaths, we often don't know we have a choice. If we feel something, we talk so often, especially in class about like, we, we're lean inners, right? Like we tend to lean really far forward and retreat can be an energetic lean back from someone. You can literally exit a situation and you can leave a, a building, you can leave a conversation, anything. Or you can even just energetically retreat from a situation, use your senses to kind of get yourself grounded, to be able to be consciously know what's theirs, what's mine, what do I want to do in order to regulate? You know, that's one of the things that happens with empaths is because they absorb and take on so many other sensory levels of input, it's hard for them to regulate it. They're getting it from every dynamic. And so retreat gives you a, a choice remembering that we have choice in who, what, when, where, how, why we engage or don't engage. If we say yes to something, if we don't, absolutely per- perfect. Anything else, either one of you want to say about that? Just that for me, what you were saying, you know, it's just, it's very much a pause button. Like I need being an empath, a pause button yeah. to ground, to settle, to, um, to process and to kind of sift or sort or filter what's mine and what what's coming from the outside in Mm -hmm. so that I can make authentic choices and I can respond authentically and in my highest and best interest and what's in my highest and best interest is always going to be in the highest and best interest of those that I'm with yeah okay Kimmy I just really like the word that you said, regulate, because I think that's huge. Um, Again, because as an empath, there is so much energy, sometimes distorted, sometimes confusing energy, sometimes um, exciting, loud energy, and just learning to regulate it is just a huge tool that's been so beneficial for me. I'm one of those that picks up energy from even inanimate things, pictures. And so to be able to go into nature and kind of transfer that ability to pick up on energy to nature, to, to stand in trees and, and little bugs and things like that. And just to feel the energy of that is so regulating though. When, when you're feeling confused about your energy to take it out into nature and really, it just feels, just feels balanced sometimes in nature to feel the energy from that. So I'm not sure if everybody will relate with that, but if you are, I hope that kind of encourages you. So yeah. Empaths tend to be very drawn nature animals. And I think there's two things, especially when I just heard you talking simplicity and ease, right? It's just what exists in nature. And it, yeah, we, they, there's no part of nature. We've talked a lot about force versus flow and the idea that there's no part of nature that kind of forces its way through. You don't see the bugs really kind of dominating in through. It's just this natural level of being simplicity and ease. The world is so complex 
And when you're in nature, it just brings you right back to the basics. Yeah. Um, so in my practice, and I think also online, I offer the classes, um, CBD, Commodities, Boundaries, and Decision Making. I also offer Radical Self-Care. And um, you guys have part, partaken in some of that. You Misunderstood is also a book and a course online in which I write about tools. I want people to not only have awareness because that's such a, that is a tool in and of itself, but knowing what, what is happening is very different than knowing what to do. In all of that coursework, part of what I talk about are actual tools. And I'm thinking specifically about things like boundaries, understanding your commodities, time, energy, and effort. And remember those SOS tools, those sense of self tools, actually 10 specific things designed to strengthen you, give you a more solid foundation. Out of all the things, and maybe you have, certainly there's many more that I haven't just mentioned. Are there other things that you know is specifically uh, a tool you bring with you in order to have some conscious awareness when you're going out into the world, when you're doing that level of self-care or engaging with other people, what tools do you bring with you? Um, something I think I bring with me is now is and I'm kind of getting back to that pause button, but having something that I can say when I feel like I'm maybe put on the spot, um, like having a phrase like, you know, I'll listen, but I might not be ready to make a choice yet or decide yet or give myself, maybe it's just permission, give myself permission to redecide something. Yeah. Um, so that's something that I've really been utilizing more, um, that makes just navigating the world, navigating situations, relationships easier. And again, that allows me to kind of hit a pause button so that I can respond versus react mm -hmm. and I can be in flow. I can know the direction I'm supposed to go, the decision I'm supposed to make. Mm. The, the redecide has been a big theme, I think in our community lately, really being able to decide. You know, I was going down this road and I've, I've re-decided with things. And you just mentioned three very specific SOS tools. And self-define is absolutely one, kind of the idea that I get to decide who and what and how I want to engage, define my basic belief systems about things. Some level of of self-responsibility. Like this is not good for me. And how can I start to change my interactions, which is also self-honoring. I want to align my behavior with what's in my best interest in having a script. I, I write different types of scripts in misunderstood for people because often it's like that deer in the headlight. And as an empath, you might be a pleaser who, who's absorbing the energy and you feel like you have to give a response. Having a script, maybe it's one I've written, maybe it's one that Carrie has shared, or maybe you write your own, a line to be able to buy yourself some time to get yourself regulated, grounded, maybe get out into nature so that then you can respond. Reacting versus responding to totally different things. Yeah, very cool. Kimmy? And I think kind of along that same line, sometimes I, I feel like if I, I am a pleaser um, and will um, say things just to please or, you know, um, not to get into an argument. And I think I've also learned that sometimes no response is okay. That um, if I'm not ready to give a response, I'm not, if, if, if there are some situations where I'm not required and it's okay, I don't have to give an immediate response and that's honoring because I don't know right now. It's okay to say, I, I'm not ready to answer that. Cause I think I'm always one that wants to give the answer right away or to agree or disagree with somebody when maybe I don't know where I fall in line with that. So I think for me also taking a minute to, to realize I don't always have to have that reaction. And then the other tool I feel like that's been huge for me is if I know I'm going into a situation that's difficult or a conversation or talking with somebody, and this is a big one for me is having something in my hand. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of little trinkets. Yes. I have um, seashells in my car. I have crosses on my nightstand because that's where I do some of my conversations at night, you know, something for me to hold on to. It takes some of the energy that I have and kind of transfers it if I'm rubbing it. And um, if I'm feeling the energy as I'm talking with somebody, their energy coming to me, trying to overwhelm me, it kind of helps transfer it. So holding on to something has been 
very, very important for me. And again, I have them kind of spaced at different places of the house that I know. Um, and, and even if I know it's a conversation that I'm going to have, that's difficult. And I'm just having a pen and paper, just to doodle, to transfer the energy that I'm feeling, it, whether it's words or drawings, or maybe just circles or something. So these are small little things, but I do believe that for me, it's been this perfect little puzzle of each little tiny piece that is making this work. It's not one, two, it is a whole little million piece puzzle that I'm finding each little piece works in different places. That's, that's, that's a beautiful illustration of that. And it goes back to the sensory stuff of what, what we were talking about earlier. I almost always will have something in my hand, knowing how to kind of protect this emotional center that, you know, like different types of things. It's just a different way to regulate energy of how much we absorb, knowing how we can move through it. So absolutely very, very powerful tools. And when we're going to take another break, um, but if you have some other tools that you really know intentionally, if you've got some examples, uh, but we're going to take a break and when we come back, we're going to continue this conversation of what it's like to be an empath in today's day and age. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We're back here on The Alley Effect, authentically living life your way. With me, Allison Blythe, I'm a certified life coach and a licensed clinical social worker. We dig into this concept of authenticity, offering you some pretty rich material about how to build into yourself and feel strengthened and more confident about showing up authentically in your own life. I have two amazing guests with me today talking about what it's like to be an empath and their level of journey and transformation and strengthening as they've learned different ways. First of all, a deep level of self-understanding, self-compassion, and deep self-appreciation, which I've watched grow over the years. And really kind of knowing, like Kimmy was just talking about before the break, putting different pieces together to lay their own roadmap into how they want to be, who they want to be in this world, to be so much more empowered, educated, and in, in being an empath in today's world. So one thing that probably any empath can relate to is this idea of intuition, that oftentimes we, we were talking about this as we we're doing the intro, like empaths just know stuff and we don't even know how we know it. We just know that we know it. And it can be things about other people, about a situation, needs like you two are both discussing. The intuition is such a profound way that we detect and sense. I'm wondering what, what relationship do you have with your intuition? How have you learned that it's speaking to you, anything you want to say about kind of that gut sense of how you're equipped as an empath? I would say I'm still working on really um, honoring my intuition. I spent a lot of years, I think, very disconnected, unaware of it, not sure how to trust myself and my higher power to step out in faith with it. Um, so for me, it's really been a process um, and it's still a process um, of really just honoring my empathic abilities and recognizing I'm not wrong. Mm -hmm. And that's been a big one, a hurdle for me is I'm not wrong. I'm not too sensitive. You know, um, I can operate from the inside out and not people please. And so um, when I get a, a feeling when I, when I kind of know something, I also can do a baby step and see and, and go in a direction because I can be an all or nothing kind of thinker. So it's like, I can do that baby step and then I can, I can do another baby step and I can, I can reassess something and I can. So for me, um, I definitely feel like I feel it very much in my gut. Um, and I also, I don't know. It's just, it's coming into your body and trusting those things in your body um, that you're, you're sensing. And, and then for me, it's also about just embracing that, that higher power God to say, to move and just know that you're moving in the right direction with that support. No, I was created to be this way. And 
you know, I thought he's got my back. So it's a, it's a faith thing too. Yeah. Oh, very. I believe that the gut is the, is higher power. I mean, I think that's like the plug Mm -hmm. in and you just talked about this and we talked about this earlier this week that so much empaths often do feel very distorted in their body, a misuse or misrepresentation, a misalignment with their body, because they do feel so wrong or dysfunctional in so many ways. And so the body is often one of the biggest elements that takes abuse or mistreatment in some ways. It is not uncommon for misdiagnosed or dysregulated empaths to be addicted to be uh, labeled with some type of mental health issue. Uh, I mean, all kind of riddled. I mean, it, it is very common for empaths. And so I believe that tuning in this, this theme that we talk about in class about being embodied fully and in, incorporating, that's why the senses are so important so that you can properly plug in to, to that higher sense of self. I refer to the gut also as your GPS, gut perception and senses, and really that inner working. We might not know when a, when a literal GPS kind of redirects us and we're like rerouting, rerouting, like, no, I don't want to go that way. And how often when you're plugged in to that deeper sense of knowing and you develop trust, that's what our journey has been about, is that not only recognizing how the intuition speaks, what it feels like in your body, the sensory ways it's speaking to you, but also like, fine. Yes. Fine. Lead me. And, you know, we allow ourselves to be rerouted even when we don't get it. We don't like it. We don't want to go that direction. And so, I mean, I'm just kind of holding my belly because it it is like that intuitive sense of knowing that I believe higher power, whatever you refer to it as is really the way that it's, it's speaking directly to you. For me, it's like the first signal, you know, now I realize if I feel heavy, it doesn't mean I am heavy. If I feel fatigued, it doesn't mean I am like, I need to go sleep. You know, if I feel buzzed or scattered or like, mm, it, it's really, a, it's like an indication yeah. that it's that if there is something that, that is going on and now it's time to, to use the tools, to get quiet, you know, pause and ask the questions and really figure out what that intuition is, is leading me to do. It's a, I refer to it as like a knock at the door. When we have a feeling or a sensation about something, we're not going to go run and hide from it, which a lot of times people will deny and suppress their own body, their own sensations and emotions about things. We also don't have to whip open the door and go through every time there's not like we inquire, we like investigate a little bit like, oh, who is there? What, what, what time is it? What's going on? Am I expecting anyone? What's happening when you get those cues and sensations and, and uh, sensory type stuff, it's information and learning to, to recognize it, accept it and investigate it a little bit. Yeah. Beautiful. Kimmy. I think it's, it's interesting that my intuition with my family and, and close friends is easier to act on and to respond to. It's the ones that seem weird that come out of nowhere that uh, those are the ones you're like, really, is that what you really, is that what my body's telling me to do? But I asked my husband when we were started on this, I was like, do you think I'm an, an intuitive person? And can you, can you give me an example of, and he sat there and he goes, you do it all the time. He said, I can't think of one time I, 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 I do. I can pick up on, on sentences. I can pick up on needs. I pick up on phoning our son. Who's a little bit further away. Cause I just get an, a gut that something's wrong. Um, but it's the weird ones. I think that I, I was in a restroom and for some reason I had a dime in my pocket And I kept being told to put the dime on the counter. I have no idea why. And I didn't almost do it. I was like, this is ridiculous. Nobody even uses coins anymore. Why am I putting this dime? But I followed through. I have no idea if that dime impacted anybody, anything. I have no idea. But I went with it. It was as weird as this dime situation was. It truly would not leave me alone the whole time. And I wasn't in there very long, but it was just that the whole time. The dime kept speaking to me. So I left it on the counter. I, I don't know what will happen with it, but you do get a nudge. And sometimes you question these nudges are absolutely weird and they don't make sense. Um, and then you have other ones that that do, you know, you, you, you can pick up on some things in the room that you're like, okay, maybe I am understanding this nudge a little bit and I, I really should act on it. But there are definitely times where they don't make sense. Um, and that those are really the hard ones, but I totally agree. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and that's why I compare it. That's why I do think it's so aligned. It's like having a relationship um, and this word might not sit well with a lot of people, but it's a submissive cooperative relationship that we have with the intuition that we're just like, I don't get it, but I trust you enough to know that you're going to lead me in the right direction, which is why I think a spiritual alignment is so important because some of them do feel crazy, but if you're in the spirit realm and understanding, like we see about this much of the world and yet it's so much bigger and greater than us. And so to be in alignment with a higher source that just goes, Psst, do me a favor, leave that dime or, you know, turn here instead. Like it's just a, such a cooperative, beautiful component. And the intuition is this message center. And so the more healing, this is why embodiment and, and familiarizing yourself, healing your relationship and the treatment you've done and to, to your body is so incredibly important. So, yeah. Um, I knew this would happen again because we're already kind of like, um, we're inching towards the end of the show. And I want to talk about one last thing before we wind down for the day. What is it that you would want to offer most other people who are just hearing things or maybe in their intrigue, like, tell me more about this. And I think I might be one too, or someone who has been riddled and plagued, misdiagnosed, addicted, whatever it might be. What would you want to offer information, hope, inspiration, encouragement to someone who is in that state that you used to be in? I think first and foremost, I really would like, we talked about spirituality and higher power and just realizing that we are created this way. We were created with this gift and that is really difficult sometimes, but you were purposefully intentionally created with this gift. So that being said, the best thing is, is finding that community, finding that support to help you navigate. It. And we talked about this last time too, is, is getting curious. I, I, I want to investigate this. I want to look into this. I want to, I want to explore. Why do I feel different? Why do I feel um, misunderstood? I, I do love that word because I think that's how we've all felt for years is very misunderstood. Um, so realizing that we are a gift to this world, we were created with this gift in mind. I think that's just beautiful. Um, but then also really finding a community, reaching out and finding people that can help you understand this because it, it, Allison says there is a lot of rough as, edges that come with it that are very difficult. But once you're able to smooth some of those out, man, it is it has really been a gift even more so now that I understand how to kind of harness in some of this energy. Mm, thank you, Carrie. I would say very much the same thing that knowing that we were created this way for a purpose is a very different mindset than thinking you are wrong or there's something that you need to fix about yourself. Mm. So shifting that, that opinion of yourself, that mentality um, and certainly finding community, educating yourself. I feel like the more you know, the more I've known about this, the more time I've spent in community with others um, that are in past, um, the more I val I've learned to value myself, well, the more I've learned how to operate with this gift. Um, and also you referred to this earlier. What is your toolbox? What is your toolbox of self-care? Um, what is your toolbox of managing some of the energy, some of the overwhelm and that type of thing? But just really, um, I think overall, just learning how to just value yourself as an empath. Um, and like Kimmy said, just you were created this way for a purpose. Mm -hmm. So just going from that point of view um, is just to me is empowering in and of itself. Talk about redefining, right? Yeah. Like it's and, and self-honoring, uh, that's it. There's such two powerful tools to help you be able to define yourself as, as gifted. Self-permission is another tool. Like I get to show up in the world this way and in a purpose. I, I think Carrie, you just said that, like I have a purpose and a role in this world to serve, to educate others, to touch other people. And I ultimately have a responsibility to myself to be at my best and to be using my gifts from the strength and so what do I need to do? People will ask me all the time, what do you do for self-care? How do you take care of yourself? And I have a whole <laughs> resource guide of like how I do, what is it I do to, to show up in the world? So before we end, anything else, just a quick, a quick blurb, anything else that's kind of lingering for either one of you? 
I think one thing that um, like we didn't get to talk on as much again is the spirituality is realizing that if, if you do, if you're a person of faith, maybe this might be even more confusing for you. And I know that it is for me sometimes realizing that, you know, when I have a gut feeling sometimes, you know, knowing that that nudge can come from, from God that can come from, you know, that, that little nudge, he put that in us for a reason. So realizing that that's, that can be confusing. I think sometimes uh, for me, having the faith base that is this from God? Is this from, yes, it is. And, and it's a nudge that he's given me. So realizing again, we were created by him with this gift. So when, when you have that nudge that it may be from him, so that was just something I thought of. Okay, cool. Any last nuggets, Carrie? Um, I would just say that I hope that anyone listening, if they can relate to, to the three of us in any way, um, just to be encouraged and just to, to start to explore um, cause I have struggled a lot in my life and for many, many years and didn't understand and thought I was different and thought I was wrong and thought I needed to fix myself and be more like other people. And to come from that place to the place I am now, um, it's just a totally different way of being in the world. It's a lot lighter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Heavy to light. Absolutely beautiful. You ladies know how much I appreciate you. You know that I've been such so honored to be able to kind of travel through this journey with you. You've taken the time now two episodes to just share of yourself, of your experience. I always appreciate the way that you show up authentically and vulnerably and now really being able to support other people in authentically living life your way. So thank you for doing that. And thank you for taking the time. Just thanks for being you and showing up for this work. Thanks, so Alan. thank you. If you want to contact me, you can do so at my website, alisonblythe.com. Send me an email if you like, follow me on social media, get in touch with me. I'm sure you've heard some stuff today. And if you are someone very much like these ladies just shared, if you are someone who's got this question of what's wrong with me, what's going on, can I have a deeper understanding? The answer is absolutely yes, you can. There is hope. There's an entire community and resources available for you. I really want to thank you for tuning in to The Alley Effect, Authentically Living Life Your Way. Join me the first and third Thursday of every single month on Transformation Talk Radio. Next time, we're just going to keep the, the journey continuing along this road of authenticity, covering yet another set of tools, tips, and techniques to help educate, equip, and empower you in authentically living life your way. Thanks for joining today. Have a great week. Thanks for tuning in to The Alley Effect with Allison Blythe. The moment you decide to take control of your own well-being, you start the journey of authenticity. Tune in next time for more empowering conversations and practical tools to help you shed your fear, worry, comparison, and less than beliefs. Stick with us as you step into the driver's seat and head off onto the road of success and happiness. Your best life awaits.